Farscape, for those of you who are new and aren't familiar with the program, it is um, an annual program and Judith Colva is the chair of the Artscape program. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Judith and let her kind of do an overview of what the program is all about. So take it Thanks, over. Diane. Thank you. I have a question for y'all. When you walk downtown Hendersonville or in the 7th Avenue area, and you'll look up besides our beautiful North Carolina blue sky, what do you see? You see these beautiful waving banners. It's an annual display. And these banners are artscape, where art meets the sky. Um, it's important to know that Artscape was, was founded in 2017 in, under the umbrella of the Art League of Henderson County. And Artscape really does confirm Hendersonville's commitment to art, creativity, and culture. Now, you can take part. As an artist in who lives in Henderson County, you can submit three pieces of your original artwork for a very low entry fee of only $35. And these entries can be 2D, 3D, fine crafts, or photography. And it's really easy to submit. This year we're using an electronic submission system. It's called CAFE. And stay tuned, we're gonna have more about that later. Now, write, mark this down, write this on your calendar. Submissions are due January 10th, 2022. So I really encourage all of us to start thinking now about what entries we want to submit. And what happens after the submissions is the artwork is reviewed in a competitive professional jury process and 40 pieces are selected. And then these selected pieces are placed on the double-sided vinyl banners along with the artist's name, the name of the work, and the sponsor's name. I've had questions, well, how do you get a sponsor? That's easy. The Artscape Committee solicits sponsors. Sponsorships are for only $175 to $200. So it's easy and it's fun. And I highly recommend, I say, you know what? What do you got to lose? I want you to start, please start thinking now and start creating. And now we're going to turn this back to Diane and she's going to go over the Artscape program in more detail. And she's actually going to give us a demonstration as to how to use the cafe cafe system. So Diane? So, okay, what I thought I would do is first, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the whole process. And the $35 is for up to three works. You can submit one or two or three for just the one fee. Um, so your first step is to decide what kind of work will be good in this kind of a competitive environment for where it's gonna be displayed. And I'll give you some tips on how to select your work. Then we're gonna talk about how to photograph your work um, since we are doing this new online system. Um, and then a little bit about how the jury will um, view the work that's submitted. Um, and uh, then we're actually gonna look at the cafe system. So selecting your artwork, um, Judith mentioned that it's 2D and 3D, fiber, um, all mediums are considered. Um, and when you're thinking about what you're going to submit, it has to be viewable 20 feet in the air. And so we do make the, the jury aware of the fact of the environment that the pieces are going to be shown in. So they're going to kind of think about that as they look at the artwork. They're looking at the creativity and the technique and all of the typical things that they will look at in jurying artwork, but they're also considering the environment it's going to be in. Um, contrast, high contrast and color do tend to make things more visible. But then if you look at the example that you see over on the left, that's a piece of jewelry um, and it's on a black background. So it shows up really well too. So, um, but the way you submit your images and the way they're photographed, um, if 
they show up well, that's going to give you a better chance of having the images um, be selected. Now, you'll also notice that the image on the slide is a square image, even though there's a lot of black. Um, the actual artwork part of the um, the banner is square. And so most people don't work in square. So that becomes a bit of a challenge. And for things like sculpture and so on, um, it does become a bit of a challenge. So I'll give you a few um, tips at what can, what can help. Um, but first, let's look at some images that have really high contrast. The bird has some really beautiful color and the, the mountain sea, the contrast with the sky and the clouds. So these are examples of very colorful high contrast. Um, the next slide, these are very different. These are all pieces that are featured on the current um, banners. So the wood birdhouse that was done, um, they photographed that themselves, but they put this nice graduated fill behind it. So that particular artist actually had um, a photographer take a, take a photo of his piece and use Photoshop to put it in the background. I believe what we did was we scrunched it. So the piece that goes on the banner is a little bit different from the actual artwork shape. The piece in the middle is not bright color and doesn't have a lot of contrast, but it was just such a beautiful piece of artwork that the, the juror, and we agreed with his selection, he just felt that had to be exhibited somewhere. It also wasn't square. And I think what we did was we cropped it up to just the top of her blouse um, so we could get it in a square. And then the other piece is an abstract piece, um, which doesn't have a lot of contrast. So the, the jury isn't, you don't have to do primary colors that are really bright, but it's one thing to consider. Um, here's some more pieces, wood. The piece of furniture was a, a massive undertaking to get it into a square, but we managed to do it. We actually did that one for the artist. So, um, you know, we will tell the juror that don't not choose something because you can't imagine how we'd get it on, on a, in a square because we'll find a way to do it. And then the Jean Greeson um, sculpture, fortunately it was easy enough to kind of put it in a black background and it, it made a stunning, um, a stunning banner image. So those are some examples of pieces that were selected. And if you walk around town, you can see um, what's up. Now for these pieces, pretty much we managed to tweak them somehow how, so we could get the whole image in. What we don't wanna do is take an image like the one you saw earlier of the mountains and the sky and squash it to square. It just wouldn't work. So we really have to look at, is there an area in this piece of work that will work for the square shape and the banner? And unfortunately, you know, we, ha we have to make the decision if it's not submitted to us already cropped as the artist would want it. Um, so in this case, we were able to use the center of the painting. Um, it isn't as impactful as the whole painting but you know, the painting was so beautiful, we wanted to include as much of it as we can. So a tip for you, well, here's another one that was a little easier to crop. This piece of Laura Bell's, um, we were able to pick a section and still keep her center focal point, um, but we did lose some of those bright colors that were in the outer edges. So, um, so one of the things you can do is look at your work through a square frame. Um, you know, you can lay paper over it around the sides and decide what part you want. If you're having your work professionally photographed, um, you could work with whoever photographs it to pick out the area and submit it to us already cropped so that we're, we're able to use what you think is the best part of your non-square painting. Um, I know when I'm even working on my works, I have pieces of, um, of map board that I'll hold up in front of me and kind of look at my work and look at different areas of it. So if you do work 
if you don't work in a square format, just give some thought to what section you would want that would become your, um, your cropped image and you can crop it ahead of time if you have software that can do that or if you've got a photographer that can help you do it. Questions about the, the square versus non-square issue? Ayan? Yes. So oh, I have a question about um, photography in, this, in the sense that, let's say you have a painting that's successful, but it's a small piece. Do you recommend that the finished size of your piece be a certain size in order to get the photo accurate? Um, you know, that's an interesting question. Yes, I do think you should consider that the image will be 24 inches by 24 inches. So if you work very small, it's going to get blown up. And of course, it needs to be high resolution, so it can get blown up and look good. But keep in mind that 24 by 24 is how it will be when it's finished. So for example, if someone submitted a piece of a, a, an, a ring with a gemstone in it, that blown up to 24 by 24 probably would maybe look more like a piece of abstract art than a piece of jewelry. So um, I think you have to kind of think about what would this small piece look like larger. So a high resolution versus low resolution. If you've done anything with photography or digital photography, um, you've been exposed to the, the 300 DPI is the density of the dots per inch that you need to have good print quality. And the 72 dots per inch is what most people take their quick photographs with their phones because 72 dots per inch looks fine on a computer screen and on a phone. But when you print, you need more basically dots of color for the images to look smooth and crisp. So this is something that you can accomplish with most newer cell phones. My new cell phone, which is a Galaxy Note 20, does like 1800 dots per inch. Most um, iPhones do very high resolution. The real key is if you're going to take your photos with your phone or with your digital camera, you have to set it for large file size or high resolution. They all use different terminology, but you know, do a little research and take your pictures. Um, and then, you know, if you have a way to look at them on your computer screen, if you zoom way in, and I think I have some examples, you'll be able to tell. Most of your software products that you might use will actually tell you if it's a if it's a one megabyte file or a three megabyte file or a five megabyte file, then you'll know if it's low or high resolution. Um, it, it is confusing and it's frustrating, but we don't want any of the artwork to not look good. So let me show you some examples. You know, this is, um, this is one of Tina Duncan's, this is her piece that's on the banner. And the image on the one side is high resolution and the image on the other side is very low and it's, it's zoomed into this one little section of the painting. So, and the whole, it just won't work if it's low resolution. So if you're gonna have someone taking your pictures, um, that's a discussion you need to have with them. Um, and of course, you can't take a good photograph if the artwork is all already under glass. The maximum file size is five megabytes for CAFE, and the minimum size is 1,200 pixels per inch. We really wanted the minimum to be 1920 pixels, but they that that's not their standard. So. Um, if it's a real low resolution image, it'll, it'll, you'll get an error message when you try to upload it in 
CAFE. So we're hoping that gets us mostly the higher resolution images. Um, professional photographers will have light set up and that sort of thing. I find that if you take a photograph outdoors with flat light, that will look the best. So again, the flat light outdoors, really, then you don't get a reflection of the sunlight and yet you've got enough light to, to have the artwork look pretty good. So if you already do your own photography or you have, you have maybe starving artists do it because you do G clays or whatever, you know, do it yourself. We are gonna provide some assistance. What you will do is you'll sign up for a time slot, you'll bring your artwork in. So there's a solution for you. And I'm so happy that we have that.